Happy New Year to all my late night mysteries listeners. Thank you for tuning in to today's first episode of the year 2024. Today's episode is about a woman who saw something in her neighborhood in Simbawang while living here with her family during her teenage years. What was that something? What did she see? Well, stay tuned, guys. I am Wraith. You are listening to Listener's Tales Edition. Disclaimer, this is a work of fiction. Any names, characters, businesses, places, events, or incidents are fictitious. Any resemblance to actual persons, living or dead, or actual events is purely coincidental. For today's episode, Matin will read our listener's email. Hand over to you, Matin. Thank you, Wraith. Sometimes a move to a foreign place, away from the pressures of society, can be a good start to a healthy relationship. Once you're over the heartbreak of saying goodbye to the people you are familiar with, you are left with nothing else but a refreshing start to a new chapter in your life. The following story was recalled by Survita, whose father became a much happier person than he was when they were in India. Unfortunately, Survita found herself burdened with a similar situation that plagued her father. This listener quotes, Hello, Wraith. I am Sorvita. I wrote this email to you because I remembered an incident when I was living in Singapore about 20 years ago. At that time, I was staying on a rented property in Sembawang with my family. My father was offered a good position in a multinational company and had brought our family of four along to live and study here. My father was a strict and taciturn man. He was the disciplinarian in the family and my brother and I always had to watch our backs whenever we were around him. As a person who hardly spoke, we tried not to offend him in any way and were much closer to our mother who was a warm and kind-hearted person. Perhaps it was the pressure of having to perform and live up to the expectations of his family in India that made him into what he was. All that changed when he was offered the lead position of his company's regional office in Singapore. We relocated and before I knew it, we were safely settled in a semi-detached house in a quiet neighborhood in Sembawang. My mother, who was used to the noise and traffic in our hometown, found it jarringly unnerving initially, but she adapted soon enough. The best part was, of course, my father's behavior, which changed drastically as soon as we settled. It was as if a huge weight had been lifted off his shoulders. He came back from work happy 
and he was always smiling and laughing more here compared to the times when we stayed with our grandparents back in India. My brother and I welcomed these changes as that made us closer as a family, trying to adapt to the ways of a different country. As for me, I am not exactly sure what happened, but I began to see things that no normal person could not see. I called it my special gift, and I began to experience it when I turned 14 in our third year in Singapore. It started with a weeping girl at our front gate in the early morning while I was preparing for school. She was there one minute and then disappeared the next. Sometimes I could see a lady holding an umbrella at the end of the road, waving to no one in particular. She too would disappear as soon as I turned. I have never relayed this to anyone because the sightings were not frightening, and I have never had any direct disturbances. Just these odd little instances. One night, my father decided to treat us all to dinner, downtown. He had been given a wage increment, and we spent the evening as a family should. We dined and shopped, showering my mother with things she insisted she did not need. By the time we drove back, it was almost 11. I remembered my parents talking quietly before me, and my brother was already sound asleep beside me. I looked out the window at the houses lining the street. For some reason, I felt a heavy dread in my heart, like something awful was about to happen. At the corner before the turn to our street, I saw a street cart. A woman and her son, probably about 12 years old, were tending to the stall. I find it strange that these things exist here because I know that stalls like these need permits and cannot be set up as and where you please. I also find it odd that they are still trying to do business on a quiet street with hardly any foot traffic in the middle of the night. As we drove past them, I remembered wondering aloud about this, unaware that my father was listening. Oh, that poor woman. Why can't she set up shop on the main road where there's better traffic? My father drew in a sharp breath and said, What woman? I turned to face my father. His attention never left the road, but I saw his stern eyes glancing at me through the rear view mirror. I quickly turned my head to get a good look at the stall, and for the first time, wish that I had not done so. I saw the woman squatting on top of the stall, seemingly enjoying a bloody piece of meat as she looked up and eerily waved at me with her left hand. The small boy was chasing our car on his hands and legs, moving at an inhumane speed. I turned and covered my eyes with both my hands, too muted with terror to speak. I could hear my father demanding what was wrong and what I had seen, but I remembered shaking my head and moaning softly to myself. My mother had started to panic and was incoherently babbling, her voice getting higher with fear. But my father gained the upper hand by bringing back his stern self and, with one voice, thundered at all of us to be quiet and stay calm. Even my brother, who had woken suddenly from the commotion, wisely kept his mouth shut and did not ask any questions. I stole a glance at my window, and to my horror, 
the boy was now running alongside our car. His empty sockets for eyes looked at me as if daring me to scream. I remembered my father repeatedly telling me to look away from the window. I obeyed, but not before stealing another glance and saw the boy quickly running towards my mother's side of the window. And that was when I saw the deep, bloody opening at the back of his head. I wanted to vomit right there and then. But I was more scared of my father at that moment. So I just concentrated on my deep breathing, trying hard to get the mental picture out of my head. My father took a long detour of the neighborhood before finally driving the car to our front gate. He said something about distracting strange creatures away so that it couldn't follow us. I developed a high fever that weekend and we had to visit a priest in the temple as I had started to mumble incoherently, much to the distress of my poor mother. I soon learned that my father used to have this gift of seeing things and he had lost this ability when we first moved here. That was the reason why he became a better jovial father compared to the time when we were back in India. Somehow the priest said I had inherited it when I came of age. I am not sure if I should laugh or cry at this revelation. Luckily for me though, throughout the following 10 years in Singapore, I did not encounter the same incident again. There will be the occasional fleeting figures like the weeping girl who meant no harm at my gate. But that was just about it. I think I preferred it that way. Thank you, Wraith, for reading this. It is a relief to be able to share this story and I hope it can somehow help fellow listeners who are in the same situation as I was. My only advice is to stay positive because not only does it improve your mental health, but it will also make you a better and more likable person. Goodbye and have good health everyone. Some people claim that if we surround ourselves with negativity and are always on the verge of despair, it'll be easier for these things to attach itself to us. Perhaps that is the burden that plagued Servita's father when they were in India. Good advice by Servita though. Surround yourself with positive influence and you will indeed become a better person. So, if you want to drop us feedback or have any stories to share, email us at latenightmysteries at gmail.com. Alternatively, you may send them to our Late Night Mysteries social media platforms on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and YouTube. And don't forget to follow and share our podcast on Spotify and all our social media platforms, as mentioned. Once again, I am Wraith. Thank you for listening, and I will see you on the next episode of Late Night Mysteries.